here we go again. We seem to be a divided nation, divided between haves and have-nots, divided by income inequality, black lives matter versus blue lives matter, police with bullseyes on their Kevlar vests, disadvantaged inner city victims of police brutality, Trump popularism versus Clinton cronyism, and why? We're not allowing any doubt in our narrative. We're all stuck in our knower-judger perception of reality. Pick one of the divides I just mentioned. Both sides are absolutely locked into their knowledge of the intentions of the other side. Now, I've stated this before, but when an educated and highly respected African American can say he knows that the white guy feels that he, the aforementioned African American, is suspicious of him, who's the racist? It's certainly possible, but is, is it real at this point in time? Better safe than sorry, so I'll consider the white guy suspicious. And of course, the opposite occurs often. Many cops know the black kid is gunning for them. And the black kid knows the cops are out to harass him. It's their individual truths. But is it reality? Could we stop and doubt our personal truths for just a moment and let some sanity prevail? Friends my age served our country in the Vietnam conflict. More than one reported the difficulty of figuring out which villagers were friends and which were foes. Did that mother and her three children come in for milk and veggies, or were the kids all wrapped in C4 explosives? So it is today. Is that a peaceful Muslim family, or are they out to destroy Western civilization? Is that cop just trying to make our streets safe, or is he out to revenge the death of his precinct buddy? Do I continue down the street with those four black guys walking my way? Or do I switch to the other side? And by the way, I find it amusing that when I'm talking the same logic about a wasp to a group of wasps, there's little suspicion. It seems that if we look, sound, and act like the other guy, we're likely to pass on the fear and flight reaction. And then we meet Timothy McVeigh. Looks like me, talks like me, hangs out where I hang out. How could he be a problem? Bad apples are hiding in every basket. We tend to fear grabbing the bad apple and getting sick from the first bite. So we skip the entire basket. Or worse, we throw it into the fire and destroy it so it can't affect us. What a shame. There are 150 good apples in that basket. So can we just doubt our fears for a moment, chill a little and smile at the other guy, even if he doesn't look like us? It's Kim, and this is another moment of clarity.